it really has been a long time trying to sort out Boris's water situation, maybe three or four iterations, and I finally found one that actually works well. A few troubleshooting bits here and there. A lot of people ask me on how to make it. So today we're gonna to take a look at the water system and I hope it helps you. A lot of people in the past have asked me on Instagram, on YouTube, of how I've made it and what parts are sort of contained in the build. Usually I just have to send them a link, a sort of description of how I do it. So now I can show people this video on how I've done it. I can't actually make one in this video, but I'm going to show you through the whole steps, each bit of it, and um, a sort of rundown. And if you were one of those people that asked, this will help you. And if not, and you're looking for a sort of water solution for your camper, your defender, this should be a good little guide with some measurements and some you know, links and information on how to do it and the sink as well. So let's get into it. So the way it works is you've got a 15 litre tank here, um, which fits in really nicely. So there's the side here, I've got a electric tap, which is actually a switch that goes to a pump that's inside with a tube and the um, electricity is just plugged into the battery. So effectively just turn the tap and that works as a switch, which turns the pump on inside and pulls water right from the bottom up to the top here and you get this action it goes really quickly which is nice very easy um, for a long time i just had this and it phased out this way and the reason i swapped it to the side here means you can have a sink so what was happening before was this i don't know if you can see it there this would drip like this and um that would come down here on the bed and be a bit of a pain and also if you accidentally knocked it it would go on the bed so i had to try and think of a solution to have here i thought of like a soap tray um as a sort of uh sort of catch for the water and that sort of was a bit of a nightmare it would hit off all the time and you'd have to empty it so i thought a tap no i thought a sink would be a good idea so i made this this video isn't about this sink um, but i'll just explain it a little bit it's a stainless steel cooking bowl from a kitchen with a hill with a hole drilled in it and a small plug that's actually meant for the back of a sink as a sort of breather as a uh, plug that runs down out of the wheel arch and behind the back wheel so it drains nicely and you can uh, rinse things if you need and you can brush your teeth here uh, it's very small so it does splash here so i need to put a bit more varnish as this as you can see can get a bit wet but that's really helpful just to be able to run it down if you need to swill out a cup brush your teeth i just got the jet boil Gonna make a cup today make sure to open a window and if you're ever doing this inside usually i'd cook outside and have the door open even if it was just cold with no rain but today it's pissing down so i definitely don't want to be out there so i'm going to quickly do this make sure you've got a bit of air coming in and uh, the carbon monoxide can come out and also get a carbon monoxide alarm which i have over there so i guess a good thing to talk about would be the other iterations i had before i had a five litre tank that just went in the old drawer system with a little tap on it um, that would leak so the drawer would get wet and also you'd have to take it out put it on the edge or something which is quite a good solution just putting it on the edge and just having a tap ready to go but it's not very permanent and it's also not very big because you can't really fit it every, anywhere that was fine number two was actually using the clear white diesel tank i never actually put diesel in for the diesel heater um, that would sound bad if i put diesel in it before but no it was actually water safe and also doesn't get affected by sun uh, I put a normal garden hose into that and put it on the roof uh, so that you could have a sort of garden hose attachment, tie it down to the roof and then have the hose come down and um, sort of be gravity fed with a bit of a breather. But the breather didn't work very well. It froze in winter. It dripped and it just was wrong from day one when I did it. And uh, it seemed like a brilliant idea. And then as soon as I did it, it didn't work. I also used a I think a Ridge Monkey green tank for that as well. And that was too soft. So the attachment I put in just would come out every time. And that was just um, to the point where I was just like, this is just not going very well. I need to really rethink this. And I really want it inside, not outside because um, it was freezing obviously. So I know you can get like um, front runner ones that go for the outside. And I'm not sure if they're maybe insulated or slightly thicker plastic, that would be better. Um, but for me, the outside that wasn't working in the winter taken quite a few iterations to finally get here and not without troubles which i'll speak about in a minute uh, i've been through a couple of the actual silver taps that go on the top um, they stop working um, and i've also thought about adding a manual hand pump to it which would be a lot less difficult to make and sort of to install but um, this works well for me and it's a nice neat flick on flick off situation and i've even had it on the edge here 
which acts as like a you can wash your hands straight onto the floor and if you're in a, a if you're really like in a pinch you could technically use it as a shower uh, if you put it up high enough and if it was warm enough and if you really were that dirty you must have seen these before uh, for situations like this when you just have water it's definitely just easy peasy cappuccino in one that's what we're having today the only problem with using this Stanley mug is uh, it's so good <laughs> that uh, it keeps it hot for too long and you'll burn yourself so there you go I just poured that down there I could hear it flushing out the side quite good to put hot water through there sometimes to give it a good clean um, obviously this uh, doesn't usually pool up to the side here at the moment there's about a centimeter of water on this side but we are currently on a big angle and the good thing with this obviously as you can see here that's dirty now you can rinse that straight into there that's nice and clean give it a wipe and put it away problem is as I said before now this is uh, very wet so it's definitely good to have a splash guard like I've got there that obviously works for the back if you're cooking or anything like that stop it on the carpet and uh, have some rags obviously on the go but it'd be good to have a thing like that a sort of splash guard around here or um, you know use a really good waterproof varnish at the moment I've got a floor one there gets a bit affected so it's a bit of a shame but definitely I would recommend if you're running this sit up this sit up if you're running this setup to have some sort of like waterproof varnish or a splash guard so there you go coffee's made let's go into the garage and uh, have a proper look at the water tank so I've explained a little bit about how I used it and uh, the sort of process of getting to here but now I think it's time to have a look at sort of how it's made and how I designed it um, let's pull it apart empty it out and uh, have a look at the components for it um, it's not the cheapest you know um, build I would say it's not completely budget um, and maybe you could probably do it on a bit more of a budget especially if you didn't have it electrical I would actually recommend not considering not doing it electrically I wouldn't be able to recommend you a hand pump to use but um, yeah so just using a hand pump where you just literally just manually up and down on the top of the pump and it would just suck from the bottom of the tank and pull it out instead of using this whole setup that I've built here. Right here you've got a 12 volt tap here with the wires coming out of the bottom, a hole drilled in the cap here and then clamped down so that the tap's there. The spout of the tap comes through the hole and down this tube to a whale pump and that's spelled W-H-A-L-E um, and then you've got two jubilees one on the top of the pump area the cable for the pump runs up out of a little hole here and then out to there i'll do in a minute a little drawing of how the wiring exactly works and then you've got a uh, jubilee clip holding it back on there you could use cable ties but i use jubilee clips and make sure they're stainless so they don't rust i actually left water in the tank um when i went away for a month so it sat with water there i meant to empty it out and let air to it and i definitely recommend when you're not using it empty it out to stop the water from going funny another good one without being a built-in tank means you can just carry it around i've got a spare one upstairs you can just take two and um, you can empty them out whenever you need rather than having to sort of pump them out when you get to uh putting the truck away for a bit on the end i have i think it's called an anderson plug maybe this is just a smaller one i think this might be just a hobby grade sort of remote control car one because it's not very um high voltage high rated uh like sort of the other side in the car i definitely say that this is more of like an overkill just easy setup so you can click it on and off um one quick note is to make sure you turn it off before plugging it back in again because i've had it a few times and it's been like this you plug the tank in and it's been like that and water just goes all over the car so that is not very fun <laughs> but yeah this works really well now i'd say the problems i've had are the fact that the tap is not designed to be in a water tank it's meant to de uh, it's designed to be on a countertop next to a sink uh, in a camper van which is dry and then the tap is plugged into a pump elsewhere so i think this is the third tap i've been through and I, uh, it just stops working and i think it's because the connection down here where the wire goes in shouldn't have water getting to it and moisture getting into it all the time so this time and I'm not recommending this I'm just saying <laughs> this has worked for me is putting uh, hot glue gun glue just all over it it actually already has some in there but it's just not completely sealed up um, for both the exit 
to here and for the wires going into there. And this has been like this for months now, a lot longer, maybe even a year. Yeah, well, at least six months and uh, before they only lasted for a couple of months. So for now that's working well, but again, another solution is to just use a hand pump without any electricity at all. I find that works really well. And uh, yeah, that's uh, sort of the setup that's been working for me. Um, I can put links to the bits down below in the description. Um, some are generic, some are more specific, and the tank is the bit that costs the most, but it's a British company, I think, called Kingfisher, if you're in any other country. Unfortunately, you may have to try and find one that works for you. Um, and this is all just parts I found and measured, and it took me a long time to try and work it out, so hopefully this helps you, definitely. The tap is from eBay. I guess you get it on Amazon and um, you can get them definitely in motorhome shops as well. There's one near me. I, I bought the last one from there, but again, it didn't last very long, but this is exactly the same. The first one I had, which went wrong and this setup is now working. That's just a 12 volt switch tap that powers this. As I said before, this is a whale pump, W-H-A-L-E. And uh, that is on eBay, I think as well. I'm not sure if the tube uh, well, I'm not sure of the, the sort of diameter of the tube. I think it's about 10 or 12 mil. I th and I also think that this piece came with the last tap. So you'll have to get some sort of water grade 12 mil um, or 10 mil sort of tubing to go from there to there. And then two smaller stainless steel Jubilee clips. Go off your intuition rather than following this completely. Um, but if you really want one of these whole setups, um, I have sort of been asked before to build one. I was going to do it, but then um, maybe the costs were a bit too much in the end for the person that was going to go for one. And um, I guess it's just easier to do it to yourself and then you know you've done it yourself, which is good. I think roughly, all in all, parts only, without sort of being too budget conscious, it's about 80 to 100, I guess you could say, where you look. Let's just go for 90, around 90 pounds. Um, which is obviously a lot, but seeing how much I've spent in the past, um, it was just best to just buy once and buy quality parts and it lasts really well. Let's just take a look at the tank. This is a tank from Kingfisher Tanks. It's a 15 litre one, comes with a cap, no drilled holes, you'll have to do that yourself. I've got another one upstairs, uh, which I can take on longer trips as a spare. And then you just change the top, top over and it means you've just got spare water when you go off grid. I remember searching for a long time to try and find a tank that fits well in that area of the Defender. So I thought I'd show you the measurements. Um, I guess roughly it's about 20 centimeters um, deep or wide by about 24 centimeters the other way. And then tall, which you could go even higher if you needed to, but this works just perfectly, is uh, it looks about 36.5 centimeters and actually let's just do total height with the it's about 42 with the cap and then about 46 centimeters with the tap there but yeah this tank is great kingfisher tanks i'm not sure if anyone else makes them that's just where i got it and um yeah i'll put a link down there for their website as well and uh hopefully they don't sell out it if this video um, is popular at all. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good bit of kit. Really strong as well. Um, you could drop that from a height and you can tell it's really thick. Um, easy to sort of move around and can hardly actually squish it at all. So I think that material is built for like external use and it's a really good bit of kit. Right then, um, right now I'm gonna try and draw you a bit of a diagram for the wiring. I'm no wiring expert, but I um, have been able to do it quite easily. And I found this works. So if you can imagine the whale pump is here and you've got, this is just the wiring, not the tubing. That comes out of the tank uh, through a hole. And then you've got a one side coming off that end, one side coming off that end. Then you've got the tap here, which comes, actually you don't even really need to think about the top of the tap because um, that is separate, that sticks down through the hole and that also has a couple of wires coming off. So I'll come up there with these two. You've got two wires coming off there, and then you need a mains connection from the battery, which is 12 volt, maybe fuse that as well. 
um, and then you've got a few connections there. So effectively here you've got positive and negative and if you connected that to there and that to there the, bat the pump would turn on and pump. Make sure when you do do this that uh, you've got the positive and negative the, wrong, the right way around because these are blue and brown and those are black and red. Plug that into the battery or to a source to make sure that the pump is pumping the right way and out of the tap. So if you connected the negative to the positive, it would just run all day. So let's just go with this, and that is the negative going to one side of the pump. And you connect that to there, it would run all day. So effectively now what it is, is the tap here, in here, when you turn the tap on, this is just a switch. So this is just allowing the positive to flow through. So if you plug the mains into the switch like that, um, this will break and connect that connection. So now what you need to, all you need to do is connect the mains, which is going through the tap sort of switch to the pump. So now you've got a full connection there and it makes the whole circuit. So now when you turn this actual tap up and down, uh, it turns the pump on and off. And as I said before, just make sure you've got these the right way around so that the pump is actually pumping out to the tap in the right direction and not pulling from the tap. I don't know if that's possible with the sort of the way that this is wired, but um, if this helps, uh, that's how it works. Maybe go back and forward and uh, have a look at this video once more. It all goes from inside the tank to outside, unfortunately. It's a shame that the switch doesn't, wiring doesn't come out of here, but it comes into the, ta into the tank and that's a bit of a shame. That's why we have to seal it up. Bring it all out again. And then what I like to do when the wires come out is just um, either use like conduit um, shrink tubing or tape. I've recently done it really badly and had it really neat before with electrical tape. And just make sure you use shrink tubing or some sort of insulating tape on every connection um, because they sort of do run together and stop shorting. I hope that this has helped and not confused you. <laughs> and uh, now it's your turn to start making it. So there you go, there's the tank set up. Not the cheapest, but it definitely works well. And you've got a few options for either electric or non-electric. Um, if this goes wrong once more, I will definitely go to a sort of manual setup to eradicate those issues. So I hope that's helped you if you've been struggling for an idea for yours, for a Defender, for anything else, for the wiring. Uh, or if you've seen mine a long time in the video and have been asking me and I didn't reply, there's your video of how to do it. Um, any questions, please put them down in the comments below. Share this to anyone that you need and subscribe while you're here. I'm definitely going to be here on YouTube for the long run and I hope this video has helped you a lot. It would have helped me in the first place instead of going through all those iterations. Um, please let me know down in the comments below or message me uh, any other sort of tips or sort of insights into parts of the build that I didn't go into in the full build that you'd like to see uh, as I'm planning on doing a lot more videos now and ideas sometimes don't come. So it's great to hear from you. Soon I'll be doing a Q&A and uh, it'll be great to hear from you then. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.